So moving on to Vivi, this guy is one of the most recognisable Final Fantasy IX characters, and his narrative arc is one of the more prominent and touching subplots that we actually have in this game. Vivi's introduction slide states, Sorrow, how do you prove you exist? Maybe we don't exist. And I think this is one of the more prolific and existential plights of a character which we've seen in this game. You know, indeed, the, ex the existential philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre famously wrote that existence precedes essence. And that is one of the fundamental conundrums of being human that is crystallised perfectly in the story arc of Vivi, who has to reconcile himself as a living, breathing, rational being, you know, for a finite amount of time, but with a purpose that is wholly self-determined, and it's down to him to find meaning in that. So this aspect of identity within the framework of the finiteness of being is delivered in, you know, really quite a harrowing way, mainly because Vivi is a child. So, you know, with Vivi being a child, we have these themes being explored with a degree of naivety, and death, for example, is referred to as stopping. And at various points in the game, Vivi finds it hard to understand why someone would, you know, stop if they weren't sick or injured. You know, his grandfather is one example. And then there's another scene at the Black Mage Village where this question is being considered by the newly self-aware Mr. 57, who has just buried his friend Mr. 36. Vivi is also an interesting character because, although he's scared of the prospect of stopping, he is inherently moral, you know, much like Zidane and Garnet. And when Kuja makes an offer to extend the lives of all the Black Mages if they fight for him, Vivi is horrified that they would actually accept this offer, which puts him in the arena of, you know, Kantian ethics, I think, as his self-determinism is geared towards a collective good, as opposed to selfishness and individualism, which is exhibited, you know, by the other black mages who, you know, decide to fight and kill purely to increase their own lives. Turning to the theme of identity with Vivi, you know, I feel Vivi suffers recurring persecution through this game. Um, you know, many of the inhabitants of Gaia mistake him for one of the soulless black mages and frequently uh, react with fear and anger towards him. So we we see this again, this kind of moral streak in Vivi. You know, he's he's kind of mortified that, you know, these people would judge him and who he is, you know, based, based on, you know, you know, how he appears to be. And, you know, he frequently kind of goes off on these introspective tangents wondering you know whether he is indeed one of these monsters you know even though his self-awareness kind of rejects fundamentally what it is that they are doing the conclusion of Vivi's story arc is quite bittersweet you know he ultimately finds a reason for being and oddly somehow manages to create progeny which is never explained to us but then of course you know he ultimately dies as it, at his predetermined life uh, lifespan you know, by the time we get to the ending FMV. So, you know, it's quite touching and it's quite tragic because Vivi toils throughout the majority of this game, you know, again, tying in with the f philosophical model of existentialism, which sees humanity as fundamentally full of anguish and suffering and ultimately death, but also sees the solution to this being to rationally utilise free will, you know, to find meaning in an inherently irrational universe. So... This entire philosophical framework being played out by Vivi is one of the most interesting and one of the most touching narrative points, I think, in, in Final Fantasy IX. Just finally, quickly moving on to Vivi's aesthetics. He is very obviously the traditional black mage seen in Square games, just much shorter. Um, his outfit is also much more 17th century privateer looking, you know, than it is a robed mage because, you know, he has these large cuff, uh, large gloves and cuffs and you know, this frock coat. So it ties in again, you know, with the westernised aspects that we've identi and identified in the aesthetics of this game. Um, finally, of course, as a mage, he utilises black magic during gameplay, and it, yeah, it's pretty cool he can be synced up with Steiner in battle so that Steiner can also kind of carry out magic attacks as well, which is pretty awesome. 